Well, hello, my name is Ali. Welcome to The Pump Room. This is a bar built in a garage in the south of England. I'm here to bring you a new segment of the review called Kit Bag Cocktails. Cocktails on the go. So let me set the scene for you. You play for a soccer, football, hockey, ping pong. You play for a sports team, you go away. You're coming back on the bus, stop at a petrol station, a, a gas station, and you pick up a few tinnies. But that's not gonna last you a lot. That's not ideal. So what I'm doing in this segment all the way till February is I'm gonna show you how to make cocktails at the back of a bus easy enough to do. So why am I doing this? I used to be part of a sports team. I used to play for the Solent Thrashers, which is the American football team. The Solent Thrashers was set up in 2003 by Dave Scott and Andy Mountain. What a name, that's an awesome last name, I'm not gonna lie. It was set up in 2003 in a pub, of course, in Winchester. Started as a flag American football team, as most do, and then it progressed. But during the time when it was a flag football team, it did have a bit of success. Beating Team England in the tournament, but losing out to Team America. Boo America. What is flag football? Basically, it's a non-contact version of American football. So people will go around, they'll run around without pads on, without helmets. And the idea is that each player has flags in the back of their trousers. <laughs> so each player would have flags in, in, on their belts. So it's kind of like touch rugby. If a player grabs that flag, that means that they've been tackled. I think that's the idea of it. It's cheaper to do. So it's like, you don't have to pay for all the gear. There's not much insurance involved as well because it's a non-contact sport. So a lot of American football teams will start off as that and then progress once they've got the roster, once they've got the players in to then progress onto an actual contact American football team. So Solent Thrasher started off as a flag football team. It then progressed, had a bit of ups and downs. It originally started in Andover and then it moved to Winchester and now it's in South Hampton. So in Thrashers recently in 2019 won the division one championship so they had an undefeated season all the way through to the playoffs they then got to the finals it was then I think 14-14 in the final like two minutes got through the defense and then they just won so now they're in the premiership the Stone Thrashers are in the premiership and they're playing with the London big dogs so it's great for the south coast for an American football team to get to the premiership of course in England in Britain American football is not paid this is something that people do for a hobby for passion so when I joined they were in division one I played for one season had an amazing time but what I found was that when we were coming back from away days and we were celebrating a win which was actually quite often we actually did pretty well on the road we would stop off at the nearest petrol station services and we would grab a bottle of wine so in the Solent Thrashers you'd have this thing called wine club now this was set up by my brother or I don't I, I think he's claiming the fame of it I have no idea the idea of wine club was that you stop off at a petrol station grab a rosé not even like a white or a red you grab a rosé probably warm if you're lucky enough to get it cold fantastic and then you go at the back of the bus and you drink your wine now in order to be in wine club you'd have to tell an embarrassing story I am not going to do that because my parents are watching Hi, mom. I thought we should elevate that and start moving away from wine and beer and going on to cocktails. So I'm gonna create a five part rating system. So first off, the price, it needs to be cheap. We're not gonna be buying tons of spirits. Ease of making. I'm not expecting everyone to have like a cocktail shaker and stuff like that in their kit bag. That would be ridiculous. It needs to be easy enough to make. We need to be able to do it while we're bumping around on the M3. The next one is taste. Taste, man, you gotta make sure this thing tastes good. You don't wanna have something like a Negroni and you, you don't like it, you know, there's no point of that. You wanna have something that tastes good, that's gonna be refreshing. It's gonna be like you want, after spending like five hours, like on the field, you want something good. Wankiness is another one. You don't wanna be that pretentious wanker on the back of the bus that's fucking having, like I say, a Negroni, an espresso martini, or like a porn star. You just look like a tit. I don't want some fucking bullshit, like mojito at the back of it. You know, mojitos have a time and a place. They don't, be, they're not deserved to be at the back of a bus next to a toilet and someone stunk it out. It's just not cool. No one wants that. And the last one is innovation. So I gotta try and be creative with this, try and be innovative with it. How can we capitalize on what we have? Is the drink that I'm gonna make, is it innovative? enough or is it just simple I don't want to do a Cuba Libre if you do a Cuba Libre it's like yeah it's a nice cocktail but you have not done anything different you have not pushed the boundaries out there so that's my rating system we've got price we've got ease of making we've got taste we've got wankiness and we've got innovation so we're going to do cocktails all the way through to February all the way towards the Super Bowl and what I'm going to do is try and do as much as I can each week and just show what we can do at the back of a bus all right guys, so let's start making a cocktail. So what we have in our kit bag, we have what most people should have is a protein shaker is one of these. A lot of people actually have like pre-workout before a game, which is ridiculous because you're on the field for like four hours. That's not gonna last. So we're gonna have one of these. This is what we need. And we're gonna grab everything else from the garage, from the petrol station. So let's get rid of the bag. And let's just put these away for now. We've got a protein shaker. What have I got from the garage? I've got myself the wonderful Glenn's vodka. Oh, I think it was about like six pounds or something like that. That is your box standard crap vodka. You'll find that at Shell, Texaco, wherever. It is. Shit. The next thing I've got is cranberry juice. Yay! 
Yay! Yay, cranberry juice. Cranberry juice is good for you. It's healthy, lovely stuff. Now we, next we've got orange juice. Can you guess what we're making yet? Can you guess what we're making? Because the last thing, well, the second last thing is your archers. Woo! Who doesn't like a bit of peach snaps? Your girlfriend does. Your girlfriend likes peach snaps. Also the gays. The gays like peach snaps. The last thing I've got is your halftime oranges. Yes, that was a thing back in the 90s and the early 2000s. Halftime oranges. There's a lot left over from halftime because none of you guys are that healthy. So we've got all these ingredients here. We're gonna be making a sex on the beach. Yes, because nothing screams manliness like sex on the beach at the back of a bus with a bunch of burly men who smell and are sweaty and are bruised and battered. I'm getting very turned on right now. Anyway, moving on, we're gonna be making this X on the beach. So we're gonna start off with our shaker and we're gonna move everything out the way. Oranges, you go there. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put in our booze first. We need to know how much alcohol is going in there. So the idea for this drink is that we're gonna be making something that's refreshing, that's light, that's gonna be giving you some energy again for after the game. Fruit juices, that's just gonna help you recover a little bit more. So it's healthy-ish for you, but let's start off with the vodka. We're gonna be not measuring it because you wouldn't have a measure on the back of a bus. You would just free pour it. So that seems like a double shot. Two shots of vodka. Normally with Sex on the Beach, you're gonna have 50 mils of vodka and 25 mils of peach snaps. But because we've got a lot of peach snaps here, which you can give to your girlfriend at the end of the trip, we're gonna be putting equal parts measures to peach snaps and vodka. So it's gonna be quite a summary drink. As you can see already, there's a lot of booze in there. Too much booze? I think, it's, I think it's fine. That's fine, that's fine. The last thing I forgot that we bought from the garage was ice. Yes. You don't need to buy ice. We don't need to do it with ice. This is an alternate extra, if you will. Now, if you want to be fancy, yes, use some ice. But if you want to be a cheapskate, don't use ice. So grab your bag. This is going to be hard to do on the back of a bus. Grab your bag and just, just put some in. Just whack it in. Oh yeah, yeah. Classy girl, dump your ice. We got a booze in there, as you can see, it's half booze. This is a very boozy cocktail. What we're gonna do is grab our orange juice next, give it a little shake, and you're gonna put in some orange juice, and you're gonna put in some cranberry juice. Last thing we're gonna do is gonna put in our oranges, so just give them a good squeeze, it's gonna make it taste really fresh. Just put the oranges in them any, any, as well, like put in like three or something like that. So as you can see, oh, it looks pretty cool, but what we're gonna do is grab the lid, pop that on top, make sure that's firmly on there. Hold it down by the top of here so it doesn't shake away. Remember, you're in the back of a bus, you gotta kinda not do it secretly, but you wanna like, you don't want people to know that you're making cocktails at the back of a bus. Well, actually, maybe you do want people to make cocktails at the back of a bus. So go a little bit over the top. Oh yeah. I'm like, I'm like Tom Cruise. He's a him. As you can see, it's lovely and pink. It's beautiful stuff. Let's give it a try. It almost looks like a protein shake anyway, like. Oh, that was lovely. So it's a nice refreshing cocktail. It's gonna give you some kick as well. It's nice and cold. It's just a beautiful little drink, a sex in the beach. There is gonna be some stigma around it, of course, but anyone can drink it, man. It's just so delicious. You got your juices in there. You got your fresh fruit. You got your vodka, your peach snaps. It's a really simple, simple cocktail to do. Let's go for the rating systems. First one, price. Price wise, we're looking at like 50p, 50p for the juices. So that's a pound altogether for the juices. The vodka is gonna cost you about six pounds. So that's eight pounds altogether. Oranges, if you can scav them for free. Other thing is the ice the ice is going to cost you a pound a bag and you know you can it, the only thing is that it's going to potentially melt by the end of the journey the most expensive thing is the archers because some places you won't be able to get that in a quarter bottle you're going to have to buy a full bottle if you want to keep the price even further down you can su substitute it for lipton's peach iced tea what i would do is just double up on the vodka so makes it nice and easy. So all together, I mean, it's, 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 I would say it's a little bit more expensive than buying your wine and buying your beer. You can take that home easy. You might be able to finish that off by the end of the journey, depends. And the juices, you know, they're pretty cheap anyway. So, so this whole shaker here, all the ingredients in there, that's gonna cost you roughly about three pound 50. So that's not too bad when you consider that this is gonna cost you about four pounds. There's a lot more booze in there. It's a lot more refreshing. It's just something that you can't necessarily get when you're at a petrol station. Three pound fifty altogether, and you could probably make about five, four or five drinks altogether out of these ingredients. And then you just keep the archers for home, give it to your girlfriend or whatever, save it for another day. Price-wise, I'd probably say, I'm gonna say like three pumps out of five on this one, just because we, you could go cheaper in the future, which I will show you, but you can also get more expensive stuff as well. So we're saving some money on the oranges and on the vodka. In regards to ease of making, I think it's pretty easy. The only thing that's the issue is pouring the ingredients into the shaker. So whether you put the shaker in between your legs and then pour it in, fine. But there's a lot of stuff to put in. When I say a lot, there's like four things. I'm gonna say four out of five on the pumps because, you know, 
not straining it, you're not gonna be putting any wastage anywhere, you're gonna keep drinking with the ice, you just keep using, you keep topping up the ice. So I think it's gonna be a four out of five pumps for the ease of making. In regards to taste, I think it tastes pretty banging. I think it's awesome little cocktail to have. So I'm gonna go with like a five straight off the bat on that one because it is just so refreshing. I think it's something that you want after a game, having something like Coke, in a mixer, gonna be like too sugary and stuff like that. This is nice and refreshing. In regards to wankiness, I don't think it's that wanky. I think a Sex on the Beach isn't really a wanky drink. I think it's an underrated drink. So I'm probably gonna go for like two. It's gonna lower on the scale here. This is like what we want. We want less wanky drinks on, on the back of a bus. Innovation, I think it's all right. I, don't, I think we could do more in the future. So I think it's gonna be like a three or four, like a three and a half. So we'll do like a three out of five for innovation. We're using a protein shaker as a, as, as a cocktail shaker, which a lot of people do anyway at home. So all in all, I think it's a good little start to this little segment, doing the review. Go like and subscribe, go leave a comment. If there's any drinks that you think that should be awesome on the back of a bus on the way home from a game, then put it in the comments below. If you want to see something like a Long Island iced tea, put it below, because next week we're going to be doing something really big. We're going to be doing a rum punch. We're gonna be making the biggest rum punch you could possibly find on the back of a bus. This is gonna be an awesome show next week. So go like and subscribe, go hit the like button, go hit that little bell button thing, which is around here somewhere. Um, and go check out our uh, other videos, um, which are up here somewhere or wherever. So uh, yeah, go like and subscribe. Farts, I like farts, farts.